this meeting of the Ohio County Fiscal Court to order. This is December the 12th, 2017, uh, just shy of 5 p.m. Uh, I want to ask Jimmy Duke to come forward and lead us in a prayer and place the flag. <coughs> Our most gracious and heavenly Father, we're happy to have the opportunity in this country to come here today and to, to work the business and work for you and for our communities to make good decisions to make our community, Ohio County, a safer and more enjoyable place to live. Please go with us now, go with these leaders, these folks that have come, come up and stepped forward and had the willingness to, to serve and to help, help them that they make good decisions for our community. Help us that we may all here today, Lord, remember to do your will and to help others and try to help others and think of those first and before ourselves. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jim. Uh, before you have the uh, minutes of the November 28th meeting, uh, I'd like to motion to approve that. So moved. Motion by Sam Small. Second. Second by Jason Bullock. Any discussion, corrections, or additions? Being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carried. Before you you have the bills claimed famous and transferred, including the late list. I have a motion to approve those. Motion by Larry Cam. Second. Second Sam Small. Discussions or corrections? Yeah, I've got a question. On page three. Larry, is this the regular or the late of this? The regular. Okay. Uh, that 12500 what is it's the community college? Uh, last year, the court pledged $25,000 to the Owensboro Community Technical College. Oh, that have been paid. Half of it was, and this is the second half we paid that's due in January. Any other discussion? Big now roll call, Miranda. Johnston? Yes. Kim? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Sparks? Yes. Okay. You have the treasurer's November financial statement, which we're not going to approve, but we need to acknowledge that we received it. Motion by Larry Cam? I'll second. Thank you, Joe Bonds. Any questions for Ann? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Opposed, uh, carry. Judge, I've got a couple of checks to give out. Can I give them out so these people might want to stay for the court meeting? Why don't you do that? Uh, Jason, you want to come down? Uh, you hurt you. I have a check for... Twenty-four thousand eight hundred and seventy-one for the uh, rotating horse branch fire department to buy bunker gear and other needed equipment. What's your pose, buddy? He's gonna take the picture.
don't want to take a lot of the course time, but uh, I'm here to represent the horse ranch, Arnold Leach, Old Leach, and all that area of Hawaii County. No, I don't want to. They can hear me. Uh, but this is all about part area center on Horse Branch, which is in the community owned. It is not your park representing the citizens of Ohio County. It is a privately owned donated, total donation park. But uh, as people have aged out, uh, they've recruited older guys like me and we're trying to reinvent invent it, reestablish it. We've come a long way. We have a nice trail. And I want to say to Mr. Cowan, I want the caboose at the Horse Ranch Park to look better than the caboose in Fordsville, Kentucky. And so some of this funds will be to make it possible. Uh, I would tell you this, I, I know Mr. a couple of these guys, Larry and two Larrys, and the judge is quite familiar with that area. But if you're going US 62 East, the most famous town in all of Kentucky on US 62 East is Rose Inn. Uh, and it has all kinds of ventures occurring. Nice parks, nice trails. But the Horse Ranch area is not that fortunate, uh, whatever. So this will go a long way to keep the walking trail up and get things looking <coughs> nice again on behalf of all the people that live in that section of the county and those in other sections of the county, I personally thank you. Thank you. And also, Burl, the uh, improvement to the fire station is going to help the park as well. Well, The I, new bathrooms that's being built there will be accessible to the park. I would tell you on behalf of the fire department, Jason, I'm not stealing your thunder, but the fire department has become a big social event area for fundraising, horse rides, trails, so that area is has quite a congregation and assembly from all over western Kentucky due to its location. And I might tell you that those of you who don't know, Horse Ranch, Kentucky is blessed with the only artesian well on the Paducah Lola Railroad that still runs today. Yes. That was from my discretionary money and I have helped the Rosine Park and the Cromwell and over the last three years, I have tried to get some grants, but unless your communities well, are incorporated, that. you cannot get grants. So, that. and the people that lives in these small communities don't want to be incorporated. They, they unfortunately, if Horse Ranch became incorporated, you might be the mayor. You don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good deal. What about the clerk's uh, uh, report? Good uh, to see you, bro. We. Uh, uh, Bess has turned in a uh, the report for the clerk. Y'all have a financial statement. I'm sorry. I'll make a motion to acknowledge. A second. Motion by Jason. Second by Joe. Any discussion or questions for Bess? <coughs> Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carried. I, I, I got a couple more things. Okay, come on. Uh, I just have a budget amendment. Our delinquent tax was. Uh, than we expected when we submitted the budget. I give you all one up there that you can look at. If you have any questions? Make a motion to acknowledge. Second. Motion second. Uh, any discussion or questions for Bayes? If there's not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign? Carried. One more thing is the transfer of the uh, unclaimed, uh, the, oil, um, the oil bills from the sheriff's office and the unclaimed coal transfer over to my office. Miranda, I'll bring these over to you tomorrow. I think she just picked up the wrong one. So I'll, I'll make a motion tomorrow. to accept. Motion by Jason. Second. Second with Joe. Any further discussion? How much did the delinquent tax go up? Right now we have uh, brought in about 251000 We had estimated 258000 yeah. 
So right now it's two feet. See, we don't, we don't have a conference number yet. Okay. No, we won't have it to the end. We just kind of have to get this done within the year. Okay. We kind of have to estimate on percentage. So I think we got it covered. Good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Now then, here comes the sheriff. Discussion or questions for Deanna? Being none, all in favor say aye. Opposed, uh, like sign. Okay, we need to pass a resolution that's been drafted that basically turns over the Clay Leach Lane Bridge to us. The state paid for it and built it. And this resolution is to, to uh, accept it and receive it back from the state. <coughs> is that your district, uh, Larry? Yeah, that's my district. You'll make the motion? Y'all make the motion, please. Okay, and I will second. Is there any discussion <coughs> or questions? Being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion carries. I just want to add to that uh, the company that done it, they've done a great job building the bridge. But there's drainage issues and they watered all the rock off of it. And there been a letter sent to them to come and go back and do some ditching and some gravel. Good deal. I want to ask Jimmy Duke to come up and talk to us the ambulance for about two minutes. I gave y'all five. <laughs> I, I mean, he knows I can talk fast. Uh, in regard to the ambulance that we had that was involved in an accident in October, we really need to replace that ambulance. We've been kind of waiting until we saw what the resolution from the, from the insurance company was, the final damage to the truck. But to bring those of you up to speed, maybe that, that wasn't aware, we did have an ambulance that was totaled in October in an accident responding to an emergency call in Centertown. Uh, on that call, for the first time that I can remember in a number of years, we called in another county to make a run for us because what happened when that accident occurred at the junction of Goshen Road and, and 69, it blocked the road and there was no way to get around it. So another ambulance would have had to come through Rockport <coughs> and we knew that, that um, McLean County could get there quicker. So that was the first time in a number of years we have, have had to call another ambulance to come into Ohio County to make a run for us. We make those runs for other counties on an average of three or four times a week. So I just want to point that out. I'm pretty proud that we usually, that don't happen here. Anyway, that ambulance, the good news is that ambulance would have been the one that I would have came to you all next year and asked you all to remount it. Uh, it wasn't needing to be replaced. We don't have any ambulances right now. This is the first time that this has ever happened in my career that I can say we have not one single ambulance that I perceive the need to replace at any time in the future. Those ambulances all are remountable, so what we'll be doing is either repowering them, putting engines in them, or remounting them on another chassis. So we've got boxes that should should be good for, a, for the foreseeable future. Fortunately, this would have been the truck that we had come to you and said we need to remount this truck in fiscal year 2018-2019. Unfortunately, we don't have that box to remount because it was it was damaged in the wreck to the point that that uh, us and others didn't feel it would structurally been safe to try to continue to use that truck. We have been able to find a used box on a new chassis that is available for sale. Um, if we had done a remount on that truck, we probably would have spent about ninety-two thousand dollars to have done that. We found this truck. For 105, I believe it will be. The, uh, the insurance paid us roughly 17, we think. 
So in the long run, we're still going to come out just a little better than if, if we had remounted this box next year. Uh, what I would ask the court to consider is a couple of options. One, we advertise for bids to try to get this truck before it sells. It's in Van Wert, Ohio. It's up for sale. Somebody could buy it tomorrow. And, and I can tell you, I've been looking high and low and finding a used truck, it's almost impossible. Uh, the other option would be to buy a new truck. Uh, if we buy a new truck, it's gonna be about 125,000. We probably can't get it until about July. It's that far out to get a new truck right now because you gotta get them in a bill line. I, I would recommend that we get this used truck. How many miles is on it? It's a new chassis, Larry. It's, it's, a, it's a used box on a brand new Ford chassis with no miles. So the box is, a year or two older than the one that we had damaged, but the chassis will be new. So it's essentially a new truck. Timmy, are you getting any state monies this year? Yes, we do. We get 10,000 every year. Um, we're setting on at the, at the state level about 200,000 that when that hits 250 or 300, we're gonna give some of that back to the counties and that $10,000 check should at some point in the next two years be 12 or 15. But for right now, bank on it being 10. But that money usually comes in, in January, February. And do you remember on the house bill money how much we put there for ambulance? I think it's about 20. It's left on one. Okay, that's I, left I on. I'm talking about on the new, the 303 money that we just did. I can go look real quick. Well, okay. it, that, that's okay. The, uh, the thing to keep in mind is if we replace this truck now, this would have been the truck I would have come to you all to replace in the 2018-19 budget. So as a result, we won't be asking to do anything with the truck in that budget. This is the one that we would have done. So that's, if there's any good news in this, that, that's it. Uh, it's not our newest truck. That we're we're going to have about 20 to go for it, toward it from left over from the last damage we bought that we didn't use. We plus the 17 insurance. Yes. So yes. it gets so down to sixty-eight thousand. Looking at about seventy-eight thousand dollars. And then you'll have this year's state aid money, which would be ten that you get instead of those sixty-six. I don't think you've taken that into account yet. The second thing I would like to ask you to consider, and I'm I may be uh, I don't understand this process real well, but I know some of my peers in other counties have utilized it where there has been an ambulance wreck and we're short a truck. Was Can this be done under an emergency declaration so we don't lose this truck? My concern is we bid it, we can't award it for two or three weeks, and in the meantime, that truck sells. If it sells, it's gone. I, there's, you know, we're back to square one. Yeah. Uh, our county attorney just stepped out, but everything I've Took, could take it to him on a emergency order. He thinks it's clearly defined and it's and hardly anything qualifies under that. Yeah. Um, is there a down payment that they'd be willing to accept? Or hold? Um, I'm not sure, Larry. If there is, you know, I I would uh, that would be you know as long as we don't lose the truck, yeah. it's not so much that we need it a week or two quicker. I just don't want to see it yeah. be gone. Uh, Justin, while you were out. We're looking at the ambulance, and he's found a used one uh, that we would consider getting. Uh, we have to go through the uh, bid process. It takes a while. Jimmy's question was, since we were in this bind, if it, if, if it would qualify to go under the, the reason emergency we're in it, order. we've had a, a truck that got totaled in an accident, so we're short of truck. You just have to get the emergency portion of the non-bidding. Correct, to get it to, to expedite the process. I mean. We, you know, we looked at the emergency. I forget maybe what two years ago on something. We, we looked at something recent months. We looked at something recent months. What, but that was on our uh, one of our trucks that went down. I can't remember. Was it the road department that one of them went down? I believe so. Yes. And we didn't have another. There was. I mean, we had to have that type of truck. And we didn't have a, a, another. I mean, you. It's, it's I've very got others, but I don't really have enough. I mean, I can truly say that without that truck, we would be in somewhat of a bind and if we would not be able to get it. And honestly, it's not so much the, the two weeks as it is if that truck sells, we're going to be six months being able to get one. Well, what we can do is I can talk to you a little bit about it as far as the emergency 
and show you a few things just to see if we qualify or not. What I'd probably do is go ahead and advertise for the bids, and then if we, if you want, I'll look at that and uh, see if there's a way that we can do the emergency. I'll have to pull that statute back up. I know we looked at it, I think it's about a year, year and a half ago. But that was the only truck that we had for that purpose. I just don't remember what that purpose was. So I'd, I'd, I'd prefer you go ahead, so, solicit the bids, and I can look for that. If, it's, if your emergency doesn't fit, we can still do that. And if it doesn't, it will, I'll, Larry, I'll talk to them and see if there's any way we can hold that truck. And I don't mind to, to, to do something financially to hold that truck in the meantime. So right now, tonight, what really needs a bet motion to, to advertise the bid. I'll make a motion to advertise the bid. I second it. Motion for Joe Barnes. Well, second right, Larry Barnes. Truck? No. And, and I'm assuming the motion is based upon the fact, I mean, it's based on the contingency that it, that it does not qualify as an emergency. Yes. So, uh, uh, any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. So we can advertise for bid. Now then, let's Thank look you. at it and see if Justin said that it would apply under the emergency order. They could go ahead and make a down payment on it, and the hope, and, and we could buy it. Okay, I'll check on that in the morning and let y'all know. If we can go that route, I'll let you know. It would, that that would be the next best thing. That'd be a lot easier than if we just hold it. Yeah, it's a lot it easier. It's supposed sure. to be used in rare circumstances. Yeah. Well, that's why I say if we just hold it with down payment, that'll work too. So yeah. we'll go that route first. Right. Thank you. If, uh, if Justin says that we can do it, yes, I'll make a motion on that on that case. Okay, I'll second. Okay, so a motion, a second, and I'll authorize the check as well. Yes. Okay. All in favor of that? Say aye. Aye. Opposed? Like sign. That motion carries. Thank you very much, and everyone's invited to our Christmas dinner the twentieth. It's at noon at the station. We'd love you to come over and see our station, see our equipment. Is our Helen cooking again? <laughs> Absolutely. You don't get any better dressing than Helen's dressing anywhere. Yeah. Oh, Paul is corn, right? That's true. That's good, too. All right. Thank you. Okay. Next, uh, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Sean and folks from DLZ to come forward and do their presentation. Thank you, Judge. I know you all want to try to keep this as brief as possible, so I won't belabor too much. We have Eric Rack and Scott Carney with us, who y'all have met before when we've been uh, before you guys to talk about this study before. And the package you got in front of you, you got a lot of the same information that we had when we presented the feasibility study before, but we were asked to go back and look at some operational costs for a facility like the size that we're talking about. So we have some of that information in there. I'll go ahead and turn it over to Eric and Scott to kind of talk about that and where those numbers are at and what we're looking at for the future. Hello everyone, once again, Eric Kratz, Principal Architect uh, with DLZ, and also we have uh, Scott Carnegie, uh, one of our Senior Project Managers, and he's going to help me tonight talk about some of the operational issues. Uh, again, I'm not going to go through every page on this, but in the bottom right-hand corner, there are some uh, page numbers, and I'd like for you to turn first to page six. Uh, page six is, was just, and I'm not going to go through all the points on this, but I think it's important to note um, the, the planning process that we went through as we worked with Ohio County and the thrift and others of developing your detention needs for the year 2040. And I think that it is one of the important things I want to point on this is, the, is in the bottom right hand corner where it's really talking about the overall cost for a project. You know there is one, whenever you build a structure or you remodel or expand a, a structure, that's one cost, but then there's another cost as a fiscal court that you have to think about, and that is how much does it cost to staff the facility, how much does it cost to operate the facility, to maintain the facility, because those costs never go away. At some point in time, you will have the cost for the building, but those are, they're, those are the other costs that are associated with that, and that's what we're going to be talking about. The next several pages is identical to what we presented <coughs> a couple months ago when we talked about what the needs are uh, for the overall um, uh, Ohio County here for the detention center. I'm talking about the, how we got to the size of the project, how many beds we went through, and ultimately, I'd like for you to turn back several pages and go to page 14. Um, page 14 is really a recap of the summary of the items that we talked about the first time. You know, you, you have a facility that it's been in use for many decades. And I think that one of the things that we look at is whenever we look at facilities and do our needs assessment, 
is that you have is your existing facility has exceeded its life expectancy. And I don't think anyone can question that point. Rip and his staff, they do a, a quite honestly, they do a fabulous job being able to maintain that facility in a working condition that it is today. Um, your jail is over over capacity. Y'all know that. And the numbers keep going up and up and up. It's not just Ohio County. It's every other county in Kentucky. It's every other county in the Midwest, let alone in the entire country. There's a lot of societal issues that is, a, and it's what I like to call the societal issues of the drug problems, the alcohol problems, the mental health, the behavioral management. That's what's filling up our jails across the United States is that 20 years ago, it just was any, wasn't anything like that. And also you have to realize that most jails, most detention centers aren't necessarily designed for the type of inmates that we have in there today. And we all, we talked about that throughout the um, overall process. Just a couple of other items on here. Again, those operating and staffing costs, which we have some numbers here to talk to you today. And also as, as you move forward, whether it's next year, two years, five years away, is that just like I tell every one of my counties, is that it's an expensive adventure whenever you go through and you um, deal with a correctional project. So make sure you build it once, you build it right, and always make sure that you can expand your facility. And those things are very important. I'd like to be able to say in 50 years that you, you know, it would be just like the facility you've had, 50, 60 years in that facility, hopefully you can get the same thing out of this one. Uh, page 15, again, this was the same slide I showed earlier, is that it's always a question, what happens if we don't build a facility? So we look at this, and what I used was a, an average number and talking with a lot of counties um, throughout um, Kentucky, approximately $35 a day. I see some counties are paying more. I see some that are paying actually less than that. But if you look at this, and I know we talked about 160 bed jail, um, and I've got it on here for 150, but if we're looking at 150 inmates, $35 a day, 365 um, days a year, that's $1.9 million that you would be paying another county to house your inmates. You don't have 150 inmates today, I understand that. But to try to do an equal comparison, that's what we looked at. Page 16 is a new slide, and page 16 is what we tried to look at is what would happen if you would go maybe within a, uh, we'll say a 90 minute radius um, of here, is that things that you have to think about as you go through that is transportation vehicles. You're, you're gonna have to get inmates going back and forth. They're gonna have to go to court, come back, whatever the case is. You're going to have transport officers. Your availability of rated beds. You know, here in Kentucky, we do a lot of regional jails um, for different sizes and different things. As, in, as a, just a point of reference, Grayson County is looking at adding 200 beds to their facility. Um, obviously, they hold a lot of federal inmates, almost 400 federal inmates. It's a little different story there. But, you know, they're look, other counties are looking at doing things very similar. Always look at your re rehabilitation opportunities. Let's not get those guys and gals that are out on the street doing the problems, going to jail with all the mental health, behavioral management, and those societal issues, is what can we do while they're in jail to try and help them? We're not a treatment facility, and everyone needs to understand that, but what can we do to help them with the overall um, process with that? Also, video arraignment, whether it's your facility, another facility, making sure that they have those. And obviously, whenever you take uh, your in-county inmates and you send them two, three, four counties away, quite often they no longer get visitors from families, friends, et cetera. And that is a societal issue. Um, it doesn't help the overall cause for the folks that are in there. Page 17 is a new slide. I'm not gonna go through all this, but these are some of the things that as people go through and they say, how much does it really cost to house an inmate? And if you get on, if you Google that, you're gonna see all kinds of different costs of what it is. But these are a lot of things that you need to think about as you start to look at how much does it really cost to house an inmate. Uh, some people say $35, I can do it cheaper than that. A lot of other people say there's no way I can do it for $35. And you can go through and you can start looking at some numbers on this. But I think historically, at least right now, um, that $35 is pretty similar. Um, to what a lot of counties are expecting with that. So with that, I want Scott to run through just some what the utility costs might be uh, for a facility. 
Thank you, Eric. Um, as Sean introduced uh, me, my name is Scott Carnegie, Senior Project Manager with DLZ. Uh, looking on page 18, you'll see a slide that looks like this, looking at the gas utility. And for the next few slides, uh, there's going to be a lot of information that's um, relevant for each particular slide. First of all, uh, these costs, uh, anticipated operational costs, or for the year 2017, they're based on the 50,000 gross square foot facility of 160 inmates. Uh, with the slide number 18, you can see here the gas calculation, uh, gas utility, uh, 160 inmates, 24 hours a day, 365, so 24 hour 365 day a year facility. Uh, heating for gas and water heating, we would anticipate that to be approximately $100,000 annual cost. Now again, these figures will fluctuate from facility to facility. Design has a significant impact on the utility consumption. Uh, as well as the utility rates, uh, so what we did is we did an average for this, this geographical location uh, when we determined these uh, anticipated operational costs. The next slide on 19 is the uh, electrical uh, protective operational costs. Again, anticipated for the year 2017, 160 inmates, 24-7. Um, and remember, we had gas heating, so we're not considering electrical uh, gas heating in this uh, slide. Uh, approximately $180,000 annual cost for electrical. Uh, slide number 20, um, where it says gas, that should actually be water. Uh, we saw that misprint. Uh, Sorry Adam. about that. Um, again, 160 inmates, 50 gallons uh, per day, 365 days a year, roughly 2.9 million uh, gallons per year, average rate of $4 per thousand gallons. Do the math that equates to approximately $12,000 annual cost for water. That's domestic water. Slide number 21, uh, sewer. Again, 160 inmates, 365 days a year, approximately 9,000 gallons per day, 3.3 uh, million gallons per year. Uh, average rate of 550 per thousand gallons. Uh, do the math, that's approximately $18,000 annual cost uh, for sewer. Obviously, all those costs would be uh, fur further analyzed once you start an architect and go through a design process. Those are all numbers that you don't know. But uh, quite honestly, the much bigger number that you also need to know is the staffing cost with that. And we do a lot of staffing analysis on our projects. Uh, and we do it in each one of the design phases because those are numbers that you need to think about as, as much as how much does that gel cost to build is what the staffing cost is. Um, staffing, you know, this is based on what we would preliminarily conceive what your project would be. I think one of the things you're gonna see with DLZ is we, we look at staff efficiency of how you're able to operate the building at, as much as what the materials are in the building because it is such an expensive item. But what we looked at is that um, as a starting point, I would rather be a little high than a too low because when you go in a little low, that's what your expectations are and each that you go up. I would believe that in a facility like this in Kentucky, for these type of facilities, that you, at 160 inmates, we're not talking about moving in at 60 or 70, but we're talking about that you're a full 160 inmates, it's um, every day of the week, obviously, year round, is that we would look at it as five staff per shift. We'd look at one really like an intake area, the holding area, the booking area, one in a control room, and then three uh, staff members, really the rover, rovers running throughout the building to do the supervision of the inmates. Quite honestly, very similar projects, they're running with three and four staff in lieu of five. I think five is if you would work with KYDOC and what they would approve and stuff and what they would recommend, they would probably recommend five. If we're looking at per employee, fully loaded, salary, benefits, <coughs> training, certifications, etc. This this number can vary a little bit too, but we're going to assume that it's $50,000 fully loaded all benefits and salary. It would take 15 employees, and if you do your math, that's $750,000 a year. I think what you would look at is once you look at your staffing, you're gonna see that's about 70% of what it's gonna to cost to operate your building with your utilities. It's very similar to that early slide that we would have in there. So you're somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.2 or so million dollars to be able to um, pay your utilities, pay all the maintenance stuff that goes into that, as well as what the, uh, the staffing costs for the overall project. 
Again, page 23 is a slide that you talked about earlier, or we, we talked about earlier about the size of facility. Um, we did all of our projections on 50,000 square feet uh, for our utilities and for our staffing. We're looking at the, from the project probably in the 45, 46, 47,000 square foot facility, and that you can assume some um, hard construction costs for that, what those numbers are. And also the total project cost against all your financing, all your um, other costs that are associated with the project, you can see what those things are. Um, just keeping in mind, uh, and this is reality, we live this every day, in this size of a project, you're looking at probably about $50,000 a month of construction inflation. That's as of today. Um, quite honestly, uh, construction costs across the country um, they are going up, so I just want, I'm not, I'm just being reality, is that if you come back in, in two years, it's not the same dollar amount. It's a higher dollar amount um, than it was two years ago. It is, it's just the way the inflation is today. Um, page 24, it was just a recap again of um, kind of the process that you go through. Um, as you know, it's very important now is to engage the community throughout the thinking process determine your real financial capabilities, your opportunities on how you would pay for a project of this size. Obviously going through the Kentucky Department of Corrections and their approval process for that, the design phase is the bidding and the construction of the project. And then I would just, in closing, um, I think that you know we've had um, you know, some public uh, opportunities here to talk about the project. I know the media is here and they do their things. But I think that the more that you can educate and communicate with your um, with Ohio County, the citizens here, uh, the better a project like this can be. Um, so with that, if you have any questions, Scott or I, we're here to answer anything that you may have. Uh, I don't believe uh, in the feasibility study we've ever heard the words Yes, I think you should build a jail, or no, I think you should not. Yeah. Uh, in a feasibility study, to me, that's sort of the, that's sort of the answer we're digging for. Sure. Um, uh, I don't doubt the cost of keeping them somewhere else at all. As a matter of fact, we didn't put in the cost of transport. Uh, I, when we were without a jail for a short time once before, the transportation cost matched the the uh, cost of the employees at the jail. It took the same amount of people transported and didn't run the jail. Sure. And uh, not to mention the inconvenience to sheriff's office, sheriff's department. Um, so I don't doubt them at all. But like I said, feasibility, I think what we're asking you, is it feasible or is it not? You know, I, I think that early on where I, I made the one comment is that um, Rip and the staff, this report, everybody that's been, been, been involved in the last several decades with your overall facility. You've got your money's worth out of the facility, and I don't think anyone can disagree with that. Um, you know, I'm also doing a study down in McCreary County. McCreary County is one of the five poorest counties in the United States. Google, look at, look at it. They closed their facility in 2013. <coughs> um, they're spending right at $1 million a year in, in sending um, inmates to other counties. They, they don't have the means, but they absolutely believe that sending inmates to another county is not the answer because what's happening, and I made a little bit of reference to it, is what's happening is they're having to send them three and four and five counties away. When they get shipped there, they're constantly, day, two and three times a day, they're making trips to go get those inmates to do different things with that. It is, it is very, very expensive. Also, those inmates that are being shipped multiple counties away, they're not getting the visitors. And believe it or not, is that those folks sitting in, in, the, in the facility, they really crave that 20 minutes they get to see someone once a week, twice a week. That means a lot to them. And I think that there is part of society that we do need to keep that uh, matter of fact in. Correctional projects are expensive projects. I live this, it's what I do, and Scott, it's what we do in our, in our careers. It is tough to sell in a community. But folks, I, I would encourage you, don't overbuild, build what you need, think about the things for the future. But I, if I was sitting in your shoes, I could absolutely be able to say 
that it is the right thing to do is to build the facility. Okay, thank you, sir. That's the answer I want. I mean, that's why we wanted an answer to that space. Okay. okay. I just wanted to follow up. I need to answer how we're going to pay for it. Yeah. Uh, that was, that was questions. I thought maybe that when you, you may have looked into some of our finances and give us some kind of indication whether, as our finance, currently finances are, that whether we're able to afford it. And I understand the need for it, and we all are here for Page 15. I, I think it was the first thing that was the, the transportation costs and the, I mean, the uh, housing costs and the transportation costs of other jails. Where that, of course, that's assuming that, that we eventually won't have the one we've got. Well, while we've got the one we've got now, that's a different story. It says on page 15, the top yeah. sentence is the new facility will likely be financially difficult for the citizens of Ohio County. Yeah. And yeah. then, the what I figure is the utilities, the staffing, a 30 year mortgage at 3% at 15.5, that's, uh, guys, that's $153,681 a month. $1.8 million a year for 30 years. But, okay, but look at the same price on the housing and the construction. I mean, housing and transportation. I mean, I, I would, where are you coming up with it? I mean, where do you, where do you come up with that? Uh, yeah, we also thought, at one time I thought we were going to get some kind of numbers on uh, transport. And no, it is in, well, not transport, but the housing's in here. Estimate cost of what it would be on the transporting. Yes. When you when you when they first come talk about doing the jail assessment, thought we were going to have numbers to kind of look at on the way in either way. Well, I I was the person who was here at the first meeting of the presentation. Uh, a couple of things. One, to answer your question regarding transportation, it's strictly dependent on how far we're, we're taking it. Um, as was mentioned before, um, it it can take as many correctional officer transports as it does actually run your in your facility. Uh, well, that's very hard to predict and it would be, it'd be able to answer. And at the first meeting when we talked about this as far as whether or not the county was in financial condition to you know, pay for a facility like this, uh, my response then, and it still is today, um, that we really need to have a discussion with the county financial advisor um, to determine the bonding capacity and we've not had those discussions. Uh, but according to the study you've got here, you've got between, you got the figure for 50 at $35 a day and 100. And in reality, we average about right directly in the middle of that. So if you took the average of that, it's 900 some thousand dollars a year, just shy of a million, the housing alone, not to count the, uh, the transportation. Well, you you're talking about the, the for transport. No. Yeah, yeah, that's both. You have to pay that too. If you transport them, you still got to pay their housing fee on top of transportation. Judge, thirty-five dollars a day. You was back twenty some years ago when I worked at the jail. That's correct. Yeah, that's what we paid. We used to have to go to Christian County four or five times a day. I remember Steve, my husband. He went. He did transportation work for the county, and they paid mileage down and mileage back, and uh, made four or five trips a day. Larry, do you remember the uh, seminar we was at? The uh, which county was that closed their jail, went to transport, and we talked to them about it. I remember talking to them, I don't remember what and because they were looking at taking on the debt of built a new facility and everything. And it was in Caldwell County, was it? I can't remember. It was down there at the Brown Lake Cumberland, I thought, wasn't it? It's in the third county. But you've got the closed in 2013. Yeah, you've got the housing plus the transportation. Yeah. But and they, there, they there showed us. Some, there should be some numbers on McCrary County then. They closed at 13 on what the transportation cost would be in addition to the $35. They told me pay. that they were spending between 900000 and a million dollars a year of paying and transporting the inmates back and forth. How many inmates are there? Well, you know, they said sometimes they send county to inmates to the next door county. Sometimes it's five counties away. Sometimes they're sending 50 inmates. Sometimes they're sending 75 inmates. But it's in that range. It's very very much in flux. It's not the same numbers we were told. We were talking to the judge executive and the magistrate, and they said it was around 600000 that it was costing them to run the facility, and they closed it. And I said, how much does it cost you to transport? And they said the same as what it was when they were running it, but they're not out the extra cost of the 15 to $18 million on the facility. So I'm just saying if we had four years at McCrary County transportation, I think they could 
probably get a decent number on sure. that. Sure. Sure. We'll have those numbers, and that's a feasibility study that you're doing down there. Yes, you know, started it. Of course, we know that we in a good situation right now. We're not not going to get any better than we are at this point, but and we do good, know at some what, point what are you our talking about a good situation. Uh, I'm, what I'm saying right now, as long as our jail is open, we're as good as we're going to get. But short of that, I'm totally convinced if we had closed that and we transport and uh, pay for the housing, that we're going to triple what we're paying now. Well, that's if you, you know, you're, you're going to, well, we're going to keep the jail that we've got running as long as we can. Yes. Which I agree with. But then what me and Jason had talked about once before, to have the true numbers, I'd have to transport for a year. To yeah, to really year transport. And then we could know her. You'd know. Hey, I refresh my memory. I went to 750000 is jail budget somewhere in that neighborhood. It's around 800000 About 800000 yeah. And you were asking the numbers. The county has, it's right at a $20 million debt, capa uh, a debt capacity that we can do. And we use about three of it right now. So we would, as far as the state looking at it, that would be about 17 million that they would allow us to borrow. What I'd like to see is the current operating cost of the jail, which you say is $800,000, and then look at the expense of building the jail and where an annual payment would be. Uh, the staffing, according to the RIP, shouldn't change very little. But I'd like to see these gentlemen meet with you and whatever and come up with uh, some kind of numbers we can look at the more informed decisions. So. The 800,000, that's including everything, right? Mm -hmm. See, that's right here. That's just a staffing number, pretty much. But what they gave us, you take the staffing utilities, the 15.5, I took the lowest, and I would see the 15.5. If you divide that up, it's 3%, then you divide up monthly per year, that's 1.8 million. But your, your budget goes up by a million dollars a year. That's, that's about right. But if the jail was closed, our budget would go up at least two million, at least, maybe three. But how do we know that? Where are we getting it. the numbers? It's there. real easy. You, you, we, we know what, it'll cost about the same amount of people to transport as it does to run the jail. It did before. And it take 900000 a year to pay the housing on the inmates where we take it. Well, now, according to the county, the county we talked to, which we're getting, Maybe it's a different county, but they told us it's costing them the same budget as what it was to run the jail they had to the transport. If you remember, we talked to a couple of spill jails, and you know what they told us. Yes, they do. So, so that's why them. I'm a little leery of just jumping right in on a project, and we, we dump an extra million dollars on our county citizens in a tax. Well, we're not jumping into it. We're giving it all the considerations that it's there. Well, no, but at the same time, while we have a jail that will run, we need to run the jail that we can. That's true. Well, we appreciate the numbers. It's not against you guys. We're just sitting here saying, I can't fully appreciate it. We can't to do this. But, yeah. You know, that's all. It, but yeah, but I, I think there's a couple of things to remember. The one thing is, you know, when you talk about quantifying those numbers on transportation, there are too many unknowns. You know, and that's like you said, until you do it, you may not know. That's but, true. Joe and I think something else is an unknown that it's not being factored in that, you know, with technology as today, I think we're going to see a lot of things not being transported as much. They're going to do it through we facility, we facility about the video rating, video rating, right? exactly. through technology. Yeah. So you don't even have to transport. Yeah. You know, and we, Scott and I, have been involved in counties where um, the county transporting said, let us pay for the video rating at your facility. We'll all save money doing it. Right. Because the cost to do that is not nearly as much as it is to transport. And what I, what I would just caution um, is maybe it's McCreary County, maybe it's not McCreary County. But also I think that you have to, everyone always needs to look at is, is when we are really comparing to another county, let's make sure that the information going and coming is the same number of inmates, is the same year, and not what maybe someone remembered happened three years ago versus what's happening and today. It, you are right. Yeah. But, so, well, but Justin brought up a good point. You know, they've, if they've done it since 2013, they closed it. It so was shut down. They didn't close years. it. It was shut down. Yeah, we should have several years of actual hardcore information yeah. plus their budget before. Is there any way you can get that? Yeah, sure. Right. We can ask them. Absolutely. Because they're, they're a smaller, smaller county than us, right? Oh, yeah. 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 I think yeah, they're 
about 17 is what I look look up around, almost 18. So we've got about two th a few thousand there difference. Yeah, we got to explore all our options. And yeah. Sure. And sure. I can throw another wrinkle into it, but you know, building a new facility that's DLC approved, you would then have the capacity to take on state inmates, in theory, and that would be a source of income later on down the road with our state. But again, it's just another or wrinkle state. to consider. Or yeah. Yeah. I think that it, as it is not complicated enough as it is. But right. Well, appreciate it. Like I said, we got a lot to consider, but we'll, we will we will find these transport uh, costs in a hard number. We know that the numbers you gave us on housing is correct because we're paying it now. Sure. Because when we go over capacity, we've got to pay to other counties, so we know that's correct. So, anyway, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Happy holidays. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We have no committee report, so. Uh, Magistrates, y'all, any of you have uh, anything to bring before the store? I have one thing. I've got one thing. I talked to David Randolph about, we asked him some questions about GED testing and GED graduation here in the county. Yes. And when I got here, he did say that, uh, I can't think of the lady's name over in Orangeboro, that they would work with us as far as doing the graduation here for our citizens over here. Now, we don't have an answer about testing yet. Testing. We don't, as far as testing here, it's still, it's, it's over there at this point. We don't have that answer, but they did say they would bring the graduation because your family wanted to come. It would be, it would be here, and he's going to get back with us on the the, the testing location. And on that graduation, I'm excited about that because we've been going to Orangeville to see the ones that we had graduate in uh, very crowded conditions, and so it's going to be much better to do it here. Anybody else? Being none, we're going to go ahead and dismiss this meeting because we all have things to do after the audience. audience. Anybody in the audience got anything for the betterment of the body? Being none, I we're say on the GED testing, I'd be happy to find out whatever information uh, that you're interested in. And it's a uh, Lindsay paper. Uh, like Lindsay, that's exactly right. Okay. But, uh, I'd be happy to find out whatever information you want and report back to you. Well, uh, kind of what David said. He, he said he was working on it, but. Yeah, that they just wanted to know if we could do the testing here. We would appreciate that. Yes, there, that's kind of what we're yeah. wanting to know. There's be been some developments in that area within the past couple of months, and that may be a possibility. I'd be happy to check on it and let you know what they can You know, it's more for some people. It's just convenient than going 30 miles. If we could do a one-stop location here, do our graduation, and uh, and I don't know, I don't want to get into too much, but one of the things that was mentioned in reference to the uh, jail was. Um, some of the things that can be done uh, with inmates as far as uh, like developing, making use of that time while they're there. And uh, that's been an issue, one of the issues we've run into with trying to have GED education there is we can get them to a certain point but before they could actually take the test, they would have to be transferred to, to transferred. Davis County, which is always provided. Well, yeah. David said he's talking to Lindsay about it. If there's something you could do, we'd appreciate it too because I'd be happy to we can serve people right here, that would be great. Yeah, if, you want, if you want to talk to me after we're done here, I'm happy to. Okay, well, thank you. This meeting's adjourned.